Uh, so by that, I want to uh, give the floor to Professor Xiaoming Fu. He's, he is a professor of computer science and leads the computer networking group at the University of Göttingen in Germany. The title of Xiaoming's talk today is Automated Management of Softwareized and Virtualized Network Functions. So please join me in welcoming Professor Xiaoming Fu on the virtual stage. Thank you very much, Carl. It's my pleasure uh, being here to talk about uh, our recent work on the automated management of softwareized and the virtualized network functions. This work is jointly with my former students, Samir Jachen Mayuten, and the former postdoc, Song, and the former visiting student, Quen Isacha, and several other collaborators at George Washington University, IBM, and the University of Riverside. So I will motivate the work by why this effort in terms of software-defined networking and virtualized uh, network vir virtual function virtualization is necessary and uh, show three cases how we make the SDN and NFV resources to be well managed in the um, software requirement uh, environment. Finally, we'll conclude with this talk. So a, a few literatures are mentioned here, but for details, you may see the uh, papers and the, some uh, other online materials from different sources. So a few of our former papers have been presented here and I will uh, show mainly three of them here. One is this ICN conference paper, and one is the SIGCOM paper in TOS 7, and the other one is latest uh, um, IWQS paper this year. So why we wanted to do uh, this work? So the uh, involvement today is that from the society perspective, uh, there are some needs and from technology perspective, there's another type of uh, set of needs. So this uh, um, convergence from the society and the technology development has drive the needs about the uh, uh, emergence of SDN and NFV. So as many of us have known from this, uh, the recent 10 or um, two dec decades of development where a lot of new user uh, uh, requirement have involved uh, from the service perspective, from different type of uh, de devices perspective, and also the industry development perspective. So the, uh, therefore the, uh, the society is demanding uh, a scalable and flexible management of the infrastructure. On the other hand, the computing and the network support that a lot of new uh, trend have occurred in the technology development. For instance, the resources are being virtualized and cloud technology are being developed and deployed and resource efficiency, especially the energy efficiency, has been a key objective today. Uh, uh, another uh, option is that the network and the service are being uh, more and more required to be automated. So these two aspects together has driving the force that one is from the internet player perspective, where the software getting more and more requirement that you have a different type of service requirement and it's more and more requirement that the hardware, given the today's hardware, hardware it's going to be transformed to be software in, in oriented network or a, a service. So on the other hand, the infrastructure player like telecom and the network service providers, they have a strong need that transforming their hardware 
also into a software, a softwareized environment. So altogether, this network virtualization take the opportunity where the software defined in both from the um, in service perspective and infrastructure perspective, both has been transforming these two different things into the um, uh, convergence of IT plus telecom convergence. So in the uh, past, let's say two decades, there are several different uh, uh, changes. One is that early century of this year, uh, early 20, uh, 21st century, there are many, many development that software are becoming the assets to make the services to have, uh, allow the same type of network connectivity to serve for multiple purposes. And, and therefore, in the coming future, we have to adopt these softwareized services toward more and more uh, uh, games out of these uh, physical resources allocation into virtualized slots, okay? So of course, in the, in the past half, uh, uh, half century, there are a lot of different um, uh, phenomena. For example, the occurrence about QoS and, uh, and uh, also emergence about MPLS. And the later on, dif uh, also different shady service started to get um, more and more deployed. And later on, the uh, network virtualization concept and software virtualization concept are both appearing as the appearing paradigm to allow software becoming the determinating factor that the service are being multiplexed into different kind of scale for different type of services. So let's look at the um, phenomenon where the network as a service, you can see here that different type of network services like the mobile domain, like the application domain, like the healthcare, and also sensor IoT domain, that they are operating different type, type of network services. While the uh, composition that resources wh which are providing such services are getting more and more uh, virtualized. So for example, the uh, access points and uh, also the operating system and also the uh, computing and network are all being more and more virtualized that they have different elements that making the uh, physical resources, be it, it as network, be it computing, be it as storage, they are all virtualized and getting different type of slices to serve for different type of services. So this vision has been deployed uh, or being deployed in today's upcoming or upcoming 5G and the next of, of 6G systems. So the network has been now more and more programmable and those programmability ha having it be in the different segment of the network, including the uh, core network, access network, transport network, and those all requiring efficient resource use and flexible service provisioning. Uh, so this joint requirement has be, uh, having a great need in leading our future network designers to support those different types of service provisioning and resource allocation schemes. So looking at the network perspective, traditionally our network has been classified into three major functional planes. One is called management plane, one is called control plane, and another as um, data plane. So the um, 
invent about SDN is to separate the data and control plane from each other so that the data can be handled in hardware while the control plane can be handled by more and more centralized um, software systems in, in the dedicated controller. So they have such a controller concept and the front end uh, data, uh, data plane uh, switch concept so that those programming uh, programmability is now implemented by the controllers and also in the data plane um, uh, uh, switches so that through different type of APIs, the applications such as uh, <clears throat> Middlebox, um, a network function, uh, different type of appliance are getting their service to the controllers platform and the controllers can then con uh, through the open southbound API to control the um, front end data uh, forwarding switches so that they have uh, such a three layer architecture in the SDN. So this um, has the impl implication there where the NV, the ver network function virtualization has become a need that different type of processing for the packets are being required to get special treatment other than best effort for store and forward and looking up the routing table and doing the one shot forwarding. So this has been uh, traditionally called mid the box function, but with the advent of network function virtualization, it has more richer function that taking such box as software defined function or it's called network functions, NFs, how to make them to ac be accommodated in a network environment, in particular, when a chain of multitude of NFs are interconnected in the network. So therefore, there's a very uh, new opportunity and research challenge for the uh, community to make those, how does network uh, service in the function, uh, service function chain can be better offered, can be better integrated together, accommodating the needs from efficiency, from the uh, application need, from the energy saving, and also efficiency in terms of determining about the packet life circle. So these, um, the overall network requirement has changed from the traditionary looking at the um, uh, router box now is in the SDN enabled and also NFV enabled network boxes nowadays. So here you can see that with the virtualized network model where the appliance are using the uh, network uh, software defined functions uh, over the well known uh, hardware with the orchestration and automation uh, support. The mm, physical hardware can be mo uh, monitored for their performance, can be optimized for their performance, can be virtualized for different types of services, and uh, also multiplexed. Of, uh, for the uh, maximum use of their efficiency. So those both flexibility, efficiency, scalability, performance are all demanded in such an environment. So how we can make those NVs or the NV enabled mid box functions in a flexible and dynamic and efficient manner and also flexibly in terms of can be initiated, can be removed, can be uh, positioned, can be uh, 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 dynamically reconfigured on demand. 
So how we can do this? Uh, this is the topic of today's uh, talk. So we can see the MV enable a lot of new benefits. For example, reduced cost, operating cost, and increased speed the time to market by adding the software defined function that the experienced programmers can deal with the software functions in the pro uh, programmable uh, platform instead of relying on the um, telecom vendors like Cisco or Huawei, which require a li longer life cycle of building the new router software and the new function. Integrating new functions are much faster with the advent of an FV and also supports multiple uh, applications on a same hardware platform, which means with the uh, support um, using the single platform can support multiple users, multiple attendants, multiple versions of the applications, and re uh, also enable openness for the future developers because you have a uh, same framework and requiring open API for the developers so that later developers can adopt such interface. So the new different uh, software functions can be further added on the system to support uh, easy uh, management of the ecosystem. Okay. So uh, the uh, difference or the relationship between S, uh, NV and SDN have been widely understood. Here is just a recap here that SDN is more about the network architecture, while the NV is more about the service provision. So how to build multiple uh, applications over a same hardware this can be done by network vir uh, function virtualization. So this concept between SDN and MV can be complementary and coexist in a network system today to achieve the full network programmability. So let's show three cases, how we can enable and make flexible and efficient management and scheduling of SDN network uh, uh, enabled, uh, NFV enabled uh, SDN network. So first is how to utilize a notion about information centric networking or ICN. So here you can see a network topology where a multitude of mid box function like uh, deep packet inspection or firewall or a cache or some other type of functions are available in the network. And traditionally, you have to go through such hardware boxes, usually as dedicated hardware box, like the firewall machine or cache uh, 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 computer or a DPI card, okay? So in the in, uh, NFV enabled meter box, so we can see how to utilize uh, an um, ICN to enable this. So um, the question about the SDN and uh, NFV is that they usually are managed on the IP address based, which means which particular box is enforcing the network functions about managing the resources, how to enable the certain software or certain service NF for a certain piece of uh, element. Then it's more about IP address or the physical location is important. But in, in a um, in logic, about virtualize the network, you don't need to care. It's more about what is required because 
in, in when you enter uh, such a um, an, as the end, you ch typically you just need to define the logic. What kind of requirement? Which particular middle of box function, or their combination, and with a mm, sequence uh, is required. So, therefore, we more matter about what instead of where. So, we just know. Okay, we want to firstly enable, for example. In the previous figure, we wanted to firstly enable a DPI, and secondly, with a DSA function, and thirdly, with a cache function, and fourth, with another firewall function, and fifth, with a cache function, finally, enter the exit router. So this is what we wanted to do with such a complicated network environment for our um, packet processing in such a network. Okay, so we care what the function are required, required instead of where it is implemented. So our proposal is called function centric service training or FCSC. So this is where we can utilize the uh, separating the location from the identity. Uh, of the net function and also trying to make the best about both the beauty about name based forwarding and also the uh, uh, software rise the function of NFV. So we can see how this uh, ICN concept can be uh, wor working here. Okay, so traditionally in the left side, this is the normal. SDN uh, function where the controller com um, combine the policy module and a routing module to do the optimization for the network element that you are controlling. Okay, so this combine two functions. One is about what the policy, and where secondly is about and which particular um, uh, router in their IP address is going to be rooted, okay? So in the new framework where we call that FCSC, here we insert a so-called naming layer where the uh, functions can be then uh, uh, <coughs> based on the name instead of where you want it to go for the router. So this naming layer, Naming well is inserted between the policy module and the routing module to do the translation between well and what. Okay, so this function in turn can be already available. These naming layer are already available in the ICN enabled routers. So let's see how these. Uh, function can be really a function as a, a conceptual level. So you can see here, typically the SDN based solution, traditional SDN based solution is based on the five tuple to identify the flow. And here in our concept, it's then we base on the function. For example, if the function A is about DPI, and function B is about cache and, and so on. We just need the limited number that the entries about this uh, forwarding engine is proportion to the number of uh, functions instead of micro flows in terms of, uh, of five tuples. Okay. So this improves the scalability and also, when you have multiple instances about the same function is required, we just need add a new phase to say, okay, in, uh, when you finish this function, the next outgoing phase in the context of ICN is interface. So in I, this phase, where to go? So in, in multiple phases, telling what kind of outgoing a function you are going to do next. So 
This way, we have achieve, we can achieve the higher scalable, higher flexible, highly uh, reliable because those functions can be trained with limited function with function numbers instead of a large number of flows. And when you, for example, in the left side for a traditional SDN based solution, when you change one of the function place, you have to change the whole description of the flow because the, uh, either the source IP address or the destination IP address needs to be reprogrammed to be rewritten and all the, the switches needs to insert or change to, to the corresponding flow entries for such um, um, function to be a, uh, able to be uh, implemented and enforced for the new update. And in our function, it's quite easy. When you don't change the function, no matter where you put, they are the same function, okay? Of course, we leave the name-based routing as part of the ICN work here. So of course, it's a, it's a debatable effort that you shift some of the routing effort from the SDN-based routing optimization. Now you have to go to ICN routing, of course. But ICN bring a lot of benefit here. For example, you wanted to have a concatenation about multiple functions to be in, uh, uh, on a service chain. For example, firstly, go through the DPI, and secondly, go to, through cache, and thirdly, go to the egress router. Then this is uh, just put a list of such function names. So it's quite simple, okay? Of course, you can have multiple of those and uh, the, this is uh, just, as, um, you just put another, um, uh, another layer about the naming. So this is when you process one thing, for example, when the DPI box were, uh, in, is traversed, so you just drop this part of the name header and then the rest of the network sees that you should find a cache um, function box for serving that requirement. And then you, you find that any of those box that satisfy the caching function, then you get that service and then move to the next. So the, the, uh, when you have stateful uh, middle box, how it can be done, you can also add uh, additional states. For example, whether you have a state for firewall instead of just the state, uh, 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 instead of just the function name, you can also add the state in addition to some functions when required. Okay, so when you wanted to in, uh, in, uh, start a new flow, you firstly the ingress router or the controller will know the list of functions a flow needs to uh, needs to get serviced in this particular SDN network. And in this particular controller, then you don't need to inform all the routers about the routing rules, forwarding rules, only the ingress, rule, uh, ingress routers needs to know, okay, now the, um, the flow needs to go through a batch, uh, 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 a flow name, the service name of DPI and cache function and, and so on, or T, TCP optimization function or a caching function or an other type of, of load balancer and so on. So you can make those functions to be available uh, to, to the specific flows. And once you enter this network, then you have the ICN enabled network element to handle this function based forwarding. And this way, the required um, function is limited. Required uh, uh, reconfiguration is also limited. When you change the policy, you only need, when you change the function list, you just change the name. You just need to change the uh, calculated name. And there's no need to change the folding rules in the routers. 
So you can see here as an illustrative example where the previous example, where you have such a function chain of DPI cache and R5 is required. When you enter the ingress router, then the network box will look for uh, the NF, which implements DPI function first. And this DPI function box will be then called. And then when it gets serviced, the first part DPI will be removed from the header. And then the next, it will sometimes you can even change the function because this DPI find out a certain features, you will get a new set of function lists. And this list will be then uh, uh, changed. Uh, uh, this is a pop-up as the new service chain to be serviced, requiring a load balancer in the first place. And uh, then with a firewall box as the second, and um, thirdly, with the caching function, and lastly, entering the exit router R5. So one stop uh, after another, the service chain will all get serviced and removing the previous headers, finally reaching the, all the functions are getting serviced. So this way, of course, getting the service require a little bit overhead, and this overhead is shown in this because you need to have the uh, configuration uh, time delay, but overall the latency is very limited. So we only need a reconfiguration delay, but other than that, it's unnoticeable that it, uh, the policy change or the initialization about the process is quite fast. Okay. So uh, secondly. I would like to introduce our work that having the uh, <coughs> service chain or, uh, known and how we can make the uh, uh, network resources to be efficiently scheduled in such a service chain, okay? So <coughs> I will go quickly. So there's a concern where you, for example, this is a, uh, uh, enough in uh, enabled network is an, is element. Okay, so this is somehow with one course uh, function that supporting multiple enough functions. But in some other cases where you have more functions are being serviced, it will a lot of different type of chains. For example, application A and the app, um, application B, they require a different set of NFs and different set of network functions. And uh, also multiple different type of calls, how to optimize the performance. This is the topic of this, uh, our second paper in 2017. So the question is how to schedule those tasks among a list of multiple NFs across a multitude of virtualized resources over different type of platforms with uh, optimized performance. So we firstly look for whether an uh, existing operating system or scheduler can work for this. So uh, the, uh, one of the scheduler of the Linux scheduler is called vanilla and this vanilla scheduler is a fail scheduler, but it uh, uh, has a very much a problem that uh, uh, it's, a, uh, let's say the performance is limited and it's fair, but it's limited. But if you use the real time scheduler, uh, then uh, like round robin, uh, uh, or FIFO, it's the, the time will be sliced and it will have uh, a um, curse of uh, granuity. And so we can see how those schedulers are performing in a, a 
a single core involvement will involve three different NFs, with different type of NFs. And let's see how these performance of three different flows requiring uh, six, uh, six and three megabit per second, um, packet per second uh, over this single element. We don't, firstly, we don't look for uh, multiple calls, uh, only look at a single machine, okay? So we can see here that uh, we wanted to have the load with two, two uh, versus two versus one. And ideally, we wanted to have NF1 and NF2 with the same uh, CPU allocation. And NF3, because it has half the traffic requirement, you ideally wanted to have only half of the CPU allocation. But in real life, when we run, when we run the experiment, we will see the normal, the normal scheduler will achieve nearly everybody get the same. And the batch um, scheduler, the similar. And round robin improves slightly, but you can still see they are not really according to our desired function. It's close to, but not yet. And it, it, this is only for CPU, but if we look at the throughput, it's even more uh, different. So you can see here the throughput, we ideally should be also two versus one for um, uh, the first two and the third one. But in real life, the throughput are far below the ideal throughput than the others, than the ideal case. Uh, while the also for the third uh, NF, they don't also get the idea and the, uh, the uh, throughput as well. So this way we can see the evaluation shows the scheduler using a standard um, either as the Linux scheduler or a, a round robin scheduler, they cannot um, get the idea NF workload distribution, okay? So what about we have uh, other way of uh, uh, traffic. Let's say we assume they are different, that uh, the, the, the NF, they are processing uh, requiring different costs. Okay, 10, five, and one. Let's say this type of uh, cost. And assuming each requiring the same traffic uh, throughput. Okay, so in such case, ideally, and one and two and and three should get in such a CPU allocation, while in reality, except the uh, round robin case, which is a little bit better, the Linux scheduler couldn't achieve this. In particular, the normal one, they even don't distinguish each other. Okay, and here also the for uh, for the batch based they are also not getting the differentiated uh, CPU allocate, uh, uh, um, utilization for NF1 and NF2, okay? So for the throughput perspective, they are also not getting the same service as a desired service because throughput, because we got the same throughput requirement for each of them, ideally they should get the same, but in all of these schedulers, we cannot get that, okay? So this means that the scheduler, even just for the single core case supporting multiple NFs, this is uh, by default, you should support this function, right? And um, this is not going to work. Okay, let's, let's when there's a chain of uh, NFs, what does that work? So we can see here, there's a, flow traversing and of one and two and, and three in, uh, in, uh, in a sequential way and each with the processing capacity of one, two and four times of each other. So that the uh, throughput here, we can see here, they are not uh, really not ideally distributed 
and the same thing with the uh, <coughs> overhead. So we can see here the uh, <coughs> Linux scheduler, the uh, CPU's utilization is quite limited, okay? So we need to have the scheduler to be load of a well and enough uh, capability a well and the train a well. This is quite challenging. And toward this challenging task, our work here is uh, to see how we can utilize a user space control framework to schedule a NAV uh, based service chains. So, we uh, firstly, we don't reinvent the scheduler from scratch. We utilize different available features from the, both the hardware schedulers and the software schedulers. And we utilize an existing NV framework to do the uh, <clears throat> enough programmability. And the thirdly is we try to uh, combine the different type of requirement into the scheduler design and also the considering the um, work, the traffic, uh, <coughs> also the uh, um, the service chain from a later case, which will affect the previous case to avoid bottleneck occurring in the beginning part of the service chain. And finally, we're trying to maximize the IO management. So this is an overview about the NV uh, design. We call that NV nice scheduler, which incorporate with the scheduling in terms of uh, uh, work conserving and proportional uh, 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 scheduling with each call. And secondly, is uh, we utilize back pressure to do the train aware scheduling. And thirdly, we utilize uh, ECM based congestion avoidance across nodes to um, better uh, detect where is a bottleneck and avoiding the follow up traffic to be uh, unaware. Mm about the uh, congestion. And finally, we try to make the disk IO to be highly efficient, okay? So we firstly see how this uh, C group function within the Linux scheduler can be utilized to do the process of um, a multiple NF resource scheduling. So this is, based on a rate cost proportional scheduler. Uh, so what is this uh, uh, rate cost pro pro proportional uh, scheduler? Uh, this is based on the NF, NF load, for example, the uh, packet arrival rate and also queue length and also looking at the computational time and considering this. So, um, the, the motivation of getting those factors into consideration is that we wanted to have the CPU resource to be efficiently and fairly allocated to the multitude of NFs it serves. So the background is when we have a basic estimation about the weight or idle time up, uh, on its up, upper bound, we can then make the CPU allocation based on those um, time features. And of course, we can see how these features are based on a weight computation. So this effectively using such a weight, considering the workload and taking the priority into consideration and dynamically changing the uh, uh, priority into the uh, service uh, a circle. Every circle, we recompute how to change the, uh, the traffic um, allocation 
or CPU allocation for the for the particular MVF share, then we can try to utilize this every 10 seconds circle with such a uh, uh, proportion to the QS requirement, okay? And secondly is back pressure. Uh, we can avoid the unnecessary uh, resource allocation and to give a better understanding how this back pressure is work working is, for example, we have two flows, A and B, um, each has, have a, has a different service chain requirement. One is A is traversing the chain of one, two, three, four, while B is traversing uh, one, two, five, this kind of service chain, okay? So the ideally uh, A and B will not affecting to each other. In particular, when an up bottleneck NF3 occurs as the bottleneck. So how we can handle it? When there's a no back pressure, how this works? So when uh, NF3 is in, uh, in bottleneck, so then uh, the NF1, uh, the um, flow one or A will continuously go into the network and injecting more traffic to the flow A, the direction. And uh, if we just utilize the normal back pressure towards the uh, source side, then the source will make the uh, flow A don't go further. And uh, the, therefore, enough, uh, the uh, feedback will be, will be given to the source one after another, but the flow, of course, they are not affecting each other. They are uh, uh, okay to uh, uh, to give the uh, <clears throat> flow into the another uh, direction. So here, if we utilize our scheduler, you can see here we list that. Okay, so the back pressure is only affected when the, uh, uh, the element affected, not about all the flows. Here, if the traditionally, we, when you get a back pressure, all the flows will be affected. There's a no isolation between a flow one and the flow two. But here, in our case, we only give the feedback to the affected flows, okay? So uh, the, uh, back pressure, once we can uh, get such function, it will uh, across the chain and it can be also uh, uh, within the chain. So this way we, ha uh, we have the multiple uh, nodes of involving the procedure will be um, uh, interconnected with the, um, with the back pressure. Okay, the third feature that we enable and uh, and be nice is to utilize ECN. Okay, so the ECN here is per NF. Okay, so we utilize the uh, 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 traditionally the uh, e, um, the uh, ECN marking is per flow from one source to the destination. Here, in order to make the resources to be highly efficiently used. So we only identify a specific enough which has experienced a, a, a congestion, okay? So this way, the uh, bottleneck is detected on an enough uh, um, granuity instead of the node granuity. Therefore, only the affected NFs and the sessions or the flows are um, uh, notified and they will, uh, who caused the bottleneck will be in turn in, uh, in getting the lower speed uh, sending rate for avoiding further congestion. Finally, we can utilize the IO 
uh, uh, optimization for the disk management. So here we utilize DPKD, uh, 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 DK function uh, based on the hardware and the uh, uh, software co-design so that the uh, packet processing is very fast. And those data and the, um, and the control plane function will be also enabled on the same uh, core uh, function so that they enable multitude of uh, NFs to be available so that their allocation is now on the granularity on the NF level, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, due to the time limit, I won't go through all the features in this design, but I will give you a, just a overview how our approach in terms of uh, multiple sessions, how we can make the uh, overall session uh, to be available, uh, scheduled, uh, of, um, and inferencing the NF aware scheduling. Okay, so due to time limits, uh, the third function about the deep learning enforced uh, 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 enabled NFV uh, design is not going to be covered. I will re quickly recap that what we talk about the, for the first two functions, one is about the Okay, so uh, about the function-centric location-independent NFV management. And secondly is to improve the scalability and performance on a multiple NF enabled, multi-core enabled service chain resource management. And um, finally, the flexibility of NS, N, SDN and NFV allows a lot of flexibility while there are a lot of open issues still stay, in, including performance, scalability, security, et cetera. Uh, for more questions, I would look forward to, uh, uh, yeah, discussions with you. Thank you. Thanks a million, Zhang Wenfu, for this very detailed and interesting and forward-looking presentation. We have five minutes until next session starts, so I will open up the floor for comments, ideas, and questions to Professor Fu. Please go ahead. It is impressive work, and uh, you have a, a nice group. I have met many of your members, uh, Xiao Ming. Thank you. So uh, I could ask a little bit what your what is behind the corner? What is uh, the next step? What is the a little bit more forward-looking vision around this? Okay, so toward the future, uh, given the uh, rich availability about the uh, virtualized functions, and let's say everybody can define your own controller, define your own NFs, and that people can deploy, but that whether the performance will be according to the designed objective requires the system designer and deployment uh, engineers to be co, co uh, um, uh, yeah, working together. And on the other hand, the function verification is a critical step in particular with regard to the correctness and the security leaks, whether the new design of NFs will cause new leakages about the performance or the scalability or the security uh, um, problems there. So I would say the uh, um, function verification and the validation is another key challenge toward the future, yeah. It will be very interesting to follow your, your work going forward also down the road. Uh, we have two three minutes more, so I could allow one or two questions. Yeah, welcome. Let me see if someone is raising their hand or so. I have too many screens here back home.
Hmm? The word is free. I guess Xiao Ming needs to go to bed quite soon because you're in China. So <laughs> now is uh, now is the time to ask questions. He cannot ask Xiao Ming to stay awake the whole night over in mm -hmm. China. So fascinating, and I will follow your work uh, closely in the future. If no more comments, questions, I thank you a lot again, uh, Xiao Ming. We stay in touch, and. Uh, thank you. Join me in giving our hands for Joming. Thank you. Good. We stay in touch. <laughs>